right, we are doing spark plugs on the 5.0 92 Ford Bronco. And as you can see, I saved the last one for this video because this is the hardest side to do it on. And this is the most difficult because it's way back there. So, first, you're going to want to take the trout off. Just take two fingers or keep pulling nice and gentle. difficult one so. I'm doing this at night as well because the apartment complex doesn't necessarily like it when I work on my cars ah there we go so we got the shroud off as you can see move some of this out of the way some vacuum lines got it right there so what I am using is the 5 8 spark plug socket. I'm using an extension and then I am using a half inch driver and this is a hand crank driver. This is the easiest to use in this area uh, because it's just pretty hard to get a, a wrench back here. And so, let me make sure I got it right. So these are not on there very tight. No, I'm like half an inch or 5 foot pounds or 15 so if you can get they shouldn't be too tight if they're super tight then you probably put them in too tight and there we go got it loosened up like I said 15, 5 to 15 foot pounds you don't want it too tight because then these forwards sometimes they slip in and that's the worst and this is why this hand one is so useful I picked mine up from AutoZone for 10 bucks for three of them. And you can pick them up at Harbor Freight. And they come with the extension and everything like that. And make this a really easy job instead of using full size wrenches. And that was the hardest one to get. As you can see, you got the front one, and your second one, and your third one, and the fourth. Now I use copper auto light spark plugs. Get them at Napa from $1.99 a piece. Copper needs to be replaced every year, but you get the best spark because copper is the most conductive metal out there, period. So I don't care what everybody says. If you have a Honda or you have any of those super fancy cars, and yeah, you want to use iridium. Iridium is what you're going to use, but if you just have a Ford, anything like that, then you're going to want to do that. So what I'm first going to do, I'll go ahead and slide it into the nice little hole. This is one of the more difficult parts, because you can lose a spark plug. I'm just going to put it on the heat shield. And go back. I'm going to keep mine on the loose because you want to go left first then right. Going left first always lines up the threads. It's always better to line up threads to not line them up. Once I feel like I got it lined up, I'm just going to switch it. Start putting it in. I don't feel like I got it lined up. So I gotta back it out. And there we go. Let's switch it. And there we go. It feels like it's pretty lined up. I don't know. Yeah, that's in. So, just gonna hand tighten it. 
Now, the good thing about hand tightening it is you can pretty much go as tight as you want. You're not really going to mess anything up. Instead of getting a giant breaker bar or something like that. I like to wiggle it to make sure. You know what? I'm just not feeling this one. This is what I'm talking about. It's hard right here because you have this. I think this is transmission cooling line. Sweet. So I got it all buttoned in. Got the tool out. I had to disconnect it real quick, but this is a better look at what it looks like. And so it's pretty nice. And then I'm just gonna get my my cable. I'm gonna inspect it. Everything looks fine. Let's get in there. And then I'm gonna place it back on there. Here the click. And I'm good to go. And that's how you replace the spark plug. You're just gonna do that for each one. And then moving on to the other side will be a lot easier. This is the passenger side. The passenger side is the hardest. The other side is the easiest. So here's the driver's side and the very last one in the back. I'll show you how easy this one is. Just slide it over. Again, using my hand. Just untighten it. Real simple, real easy. It's ridiculous how easy this side is compared to the passenger side. And all because of the coolant line. Again, just using copper auto light. Copper is most productive. Slip it in my 5 8 fitting. Put my thumb over it. Slide it to the hole in the back. I'll go left first. You should be able to do it. You should be able to tighten it in going right without clicking it too much. Just want to make sure. So it should freely go in quite a bit until you hit there. And then you want to switch it. Yeah, this one's the hardest because there's no hardest on the driver's side. Because there's like no guard to kind of give you an angle to press it into and as you can see once you find it just gotta lightly go in then you just tighten it all the way hand tighten 5 to 15 pull your fitting out press that new bad boy put your spark inspect perfect these are new lines anyways well, they were new when I got them a year ago. Put it on there, make sure it clicks. And then we're gonna go to the distributor cap. Now this distributor cap is, it's probably old, but I'm gonna inspect it real quick. We got the rotor, we got the connecting points. It looks like a couple of them are fried up, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it anyways see a couple of those fried up. I'm going to try it and see if that corrected the timing problem. I got a new cap and rotor from 